My niece brought this to me and asked me if I could fix it. It's the top of a trellis or an arbor, and it's pretty rotten. It's um, really, there, there's, it's beyond repair. So I'm gonna have to create a new one. And the thought here is, how do I go about this? Where do I get started? And I, I try to figure out, you know, what is going on here. So what I have determined is that this fits in the slot of a four by four, this, this piece here. And this is gonna fit like a tongue and groove, right? This is the tongue and it must go into a groove on the four by four. Now exactly how they put that together, I have no idea, but I know how I'm gonna approach this. So before we get started, I want to make sure our assumptions earlier were correct. So I asked my niece to send me a picture of the support beam of those arbor headers. Um, of course, there's gonna be four of these beams. And as you can see, this definitely has a slot for that header beam. And then it's got a, a groove where the tongue of the header support is going to go. So to make this clear, I did a quick sketch in FreeCAD. All right, so here's the, the part of the arbor that Kate took the picture of. And you can see, of course, we've got the, there's a slot and then there is the groove um, for the head of support. So if we take a look at adding those components, right? So here's the, the header supports and here's what the, the header itself it would look like, right? So let's go ahead and get started. We'll go down, we'll take some measurements, we'll make some cuts and be done. Okay, so we know what we need to do. So now it's time to come up with a plan of attack. What we're going to do is make this header piece first, and then we'll make the header support pieces, and then uh, these cross members. So let's take a measurement and get this all laid out, and we'll get cutting. So let's take a look. When I measure the inside dimension here, it's just a 16th shy of 41 inches. I look at the, the decorative piece, and we look at the rabbit, this rabbit has to fit a 4x4, four a 4x4 four, a four four post that's going to slide in there. So a uh, 4x4 four four is going to be 3 and a half inches. We'll make this uh, 3 and 5 eighths inches. I'm assuming that's what they did as well. That's probably why this is a little bit shy of 41 inches. Um, so we'll do the same thing. And then from the edge of the rabbit to the edge of this piece is about uh, almost 6 inches. That's really not critical, but we're going to replicate this pretty closely. So we'll make it six inches and then we'll sand it, sand the profile, cut and sand the profile and we'll get started. So these are the measurements that we made. Uh, I'm going to take these measurements. I'm going to mark it up on the two by eight by eight. I'm going to make the first cut to bring the two by eight to the final, to the total length, which is a little over uh, 60 inches. And um, then we're gonna use the table saw. We're gonna put a dado blade in there and we'll make our rabbit cuts. I'm gonna set up my stack dado according to the chart for three quarters of an inch. So it's gonna take two blades, um, three chippers and two major spacers. So what depth do I set the dado blade for? So I go, go ahead and I measure this step here and it's basically three eighths of an inch. Uh, when I go ahead and check it with a, with a three eighths depth gauge, on one side it's a little bit proud of that depth gauge, on the other side it's a little bit shy. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this for three eighths and maybe, maybe a little bit more than three eighths. So we'll make the center part a little bit thin I can always shim it. It's a lot easier to shim it than it is to, to make that slot in that four by four post bigger. So as far as um, making sure that we get these distances right to these measured marks, uh, we're gonna set this fence so that it is six inches away from the very edge of this part of the dado, on the, on the inside edge of the dado. I'll zero the, um, the, the length gauge that's on the fence. And I know that, you know, if I move the fence two and seven eighths inches, plus that three quarters, that'll give me three and five eighths inches. 
So I should be able to cut this inside line, then I'll, I'll be cutting along this part of that line, and then I'll remove the inside just by moving the, the piece around. All right, so hopefully that made sense, and, and we'll take a look at how I do it. Well, you can see I actually made a mistake here. Uh, this one is proper. This is the very first cut that I made. And you can see that that is six inches. That's what the cuts should have been. Uh, but when I set the fence, I didn't set it correctly. I, I, I misunderstood my mark. So we now have an extra quarter of an inch taken off of all you know three of these sides. So, you know, what that means is that this is gonna be a little loose to the outside, right? Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, rather than waste this, I, I'm gonna go ahead and use this board and I'm just gonna make this uh, narrow side a little bit wider. This will uh, give me a little bit more slack to play with. And then what I'll do is if there's a, a gap here, which there more likely will be a quarter inch gap, I will fill that with a, um, a shim. So we're gonna continue forward. Next, you want to lay out the header with the decorative piece. You go ahead and put it towards the end, towards the bottom, and you trace that out. You flip it over, bring it to the other side. We trace that out again. Um, now we're going to make the, the arch in this header. Uh, we do so by putting a nail four and a half inches up. That is the width of uh, the decorative piece. And the same on the other side, right where, the, right where these notches are. And then about a half inch back in the center of the board, we put another nail, all right? And when we take a piece of quarter inch plywood and we lay it in there, it gives us a nice arc. Now we go ahead and we just trace that out, which I've already done, but I did it over again. And, and now we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna, we're gonna cut this on a bandsaw. Uh, you could also cut it with a jigsaw. And once it's all cut out, we're gonna take it on a belt sander and we're gonna make it look really nice. Uh, once we're done with this, then we're gonna repeat that on the other piece and we'll have both headers and then we'll continue on with the other pieces that we need to make. So here's what the finished headers look like. Pretty good, right? Okay, so the next thing to do is we get to reproduce the header support piece. So the easiest way to reproduce this piece was to separate it from the header, and this way I could just trace it onto a board. Um, it's just interesting to note, I was wondering how they, they made this piece. Uh, so you could actually see it was joined with biscuits, right? So that was the original construction. So they must have put everything together at one time. Uh, we don't have that luxury and we're not gonna use biscuits, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna reproduce this piece and then we'll use um, 
you know, bolts, three bolts and some glue, then we'll screw it up to the header. So we're just gonna trace this onto this board, okay? I'm gonna line it up as best as I can. Um, I'll use a straight edge just to make sure that we, um, just to make sure that we get, get this thing nice and, and even. So everything's gonna be nice and straight. And I'm just gonna go ahead and trace it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. Um, I'll probably use a, what I will do is I'll use the uh, table saw to cut this part. I'll use the band saw for the curve. And um, then I'm gonna use the uh, dado blade to reproduce the tongue. And this piece should be done and I'll just do that four times. And um, we should be good with that part of it. And then we need to create the cross members. You can see that these decorative pieces actually have a chamfer three quarters of the way around on both sides. We're going to repeat that chamfer uh, using a, a 45 degree chamfer bit on the routing table. Uh, the header beam also has a chamfer uh, on both sides and on top and bottom, and we're gonna repeat that, but the, it's a little bit too large for the routing table. I could do it, but it's just, it's just not worth the hassle. So I'll take the, the chamfer bit and I'll actually put it into a router and, and route those edges as well. All right, so that's what we're gonna do next. So to chamfer the curved header, what I did is I put the chamfer bit in the router and I adjusted its height using the decorative piece, the chamfer on a decorative piece, and lining it up with the cutting edge. We've made great progress. The next step is to create the, the shade joists. These are the joists that go across the top of the header beam, okay? Um, I've already measured this. It's roughly 32 and an eighth inches long. Um, for some reason, they chose 21 and 1 eighth inches between the inside edges of these notches, and these notches cap the headers, right? Uh, cap each, each header. So that's kind of the critical distance there, right? That's, I have to keep maintain that. The rest of this is a little bit flexible. This gap, of course, has to fit over a two by four, so that's gonna be uh, an inch and a half, right? And when I measure it, it is an inch and a half. So yeah, just maybe a hair over an inch and a half. So that's what we're going to do. So I've already set up my stop block and my, uh, my, my radial arm saw to cut these 32 inch lengths out. Uh, so we'll go ahead and cut all those and then we'll bring it over to the table saw and, and create the notches. Now, lots of ways of creating the notches. We could also create the notches on a radial arm saw. We can lift this up and turn these uh, sideways and, and make the cuts this way. I prefer to use the table saw. It's just what I'm more comfortable with. We have cut our five shade joists to length, and now we're getting ready to reproduce these notches in the joists. The important thing here is the distance between these notches must be maintained at 21 and 1 8 inches. The notches themselves are one and a half inches wide by one and a half inches deep. So to reproduce those, we're gonna set up the dado blade to be three quarters of an inch and the one and a half inch depth. All right, so I've already set that up. It is one and a half inches deep. Um, and what we're going to do is set the fence for five and a half inches, okay? And I don't know if you can see that, but it's set for five and a half inches. And that is the distance from the edge of the fence to the outside edge of the blade, okay? So that's gonna make this particular cut, this edge. Then we'll step the fence over a little bit three quarters of an inch and make this complete width. 
Then we will slide the fence over the distance that's required to make up this 21 inches, 21 and 1 8 inches. And then we'll go ahead and make this cut. With the shade joist complete, the next step is to mark the header for the location of the joist. We do this by finding the center of the header and then uh, we'll go nine inches to either side of that and then again nine inches. Here you can see we've marked the on center locations as well as the width of the joist. This gives us some registration marks to make sure that uh, we keep the joist well aligned. We place the shade joist at the locations on the header. Next, we're going to use the number eight countersinking bit to locate the decking screws at the center point of each of these joists. We're going to countersink about a half of an inch, and then we're going to dowel over those with some uh, dowel and, and glue and sand that flush. All the joists have been screwed to the headers and it's very stable. The next thing to do is to fill the countersunk holes. You can fill them with a putty. Um, you can cut off 5 16 dowels uh, that would you then plug each of these holes with. Uh, in my case, I actually used a, a doweling bit, a number eight doweling bit to create my own dowels. What's nice about this is it's a surface cut it's into the surface of the wood and it really sands nice and even. So I recommend these bits. Okay, well, we're on site, and we can now see what these posts look like. Um, we definitely have determined the right dimensions for the posts. Uh, it looks like these caps, these cap pieces are all rotten. They're going to have to be replaced. But no big deal. going to knock them off, take the screws out, and we'll see how everything fits together. Okay, this is the completed project. Uh, we do get to give it a coat of paint, but we have to let the pressure treated lumber dry so we'll probably wait two weeks and give this thing a coat of paint it looks pretty good very happy with it all right thank you for being with me on a journey see you guys